Before we bring on our brother Joshua L. Muhammad, who is an accomplished writer in, um, in the spirit of appreciation of writers everywhere, I wanted to share an artistic piece concerning my experience with being black and incarcerated because, as brother mentioned, our host, Brother Demeric X, mentioned we are in a peculiar situation in dealing with uh, these systematic and institutional problems that we deal with today. And so this is entitled Guilt Before Innocence. I hope you enjoy I decided to stop telling people I was innocent a long time ago. You see, before anything, I was black. And for blacks in America, there's always been the saying that the only good Negro is a dead Negro. Before anything, I was black. And black innocence doesn't exist. Black innocence is a myth. So nowadays, saying I'm guilty absolutely beats getting the people's eyebrow like I'm in a throwback wrestling match with The Rock and not in a conversation. You know how people do. One eyebrow raised, head tilted in disbelief, lips smacked all to the side. No one tries to hide the judgmental step or the silence ride in the thought process of, yeah, right. You all say you innocent. You see, before anything, I was black. And before you say anything, I experienced what it's like to be face-to-face -face with Dowden Thomas, his fingers twisting and prodding in my emotional wounds are my personal favorite. It's not like you've never done anything wrong and gotten away with it. The polite way of saying, even if you're innocent, you're guilty of something. Maybe that's why being black, I risk be fate being faced with physical beatings are the ultimate stripping of life like Tyree Nichols or Emmett Ted. You do the math. Still, I wonder if Lieutenant Jenkins Muhammad would have been fired if Victor Russo was black. I think about correction officers like Edmonds, Big G, or Big Speaks how they all were promoted or transferred instead of reprimanded for abusive treatment and beatings leading to the deaths of men that look just like them. The system I face has true hate for an inmate. Wherever blacks uphold black codes, here, yeah, the blacks uphold black codes. You see prior or post-conviction, the system ensures every black book is judged by its cover. Guilty, guilty. Even if you don't fit the script, they're still killed. Before anything, I was black. And before you say anything, my blackness is anything but a badge of honor. My blackness is a death sentence. My blackness was my ancestors' knowledge that with the surety I'd be in a strange land, not of my own, hunted by words like crumb. Let us deal wisely with them. Tell me that doesn't fit the description of prison. My lungs black as coal miners waiting to die. Suffocated for L. I'm the unprepared L of co tail pro fighters, unprotected, unrespected, and suffer for rare thoughts of fair treatment, freedom, justice, equality, always just outside my reach. Without reason, I'm demonized. Eventually believing the lies, I've been getting rationalized. Since I'm black, I must be that evil, criminal, ungodly, or lost. Matter of fact, nobody black should want to be black. Don't you hear how improper we talk? How can I whitewash? Nobody wants to be blackballed or blackhearted. Nobody wants to black plague, black graze. You would hate for your path to be crossed by black cats. Your property value drops when you're redlined to where the black stay. Black rage. Black Maria is a prison transport van. Blacks in every major city hold a majority in incarceration. Black is a cage. Before you say anything, I was black, but this ain't paint. I can't wash away the black on my face. I can't take my blackness on and off like those who are culturated. Before th anything, I was black. Before you say anything, my blackness is anything but a badge of honor. I remember going to trial for the first time, confident there was no way I'd be convicted of a capital offense I ain't commit. The jury was in deliberation for the third day, but the judge refused a mistrial. My lawyer came to me with a deal. Why don't you plea out the negative homicide of manslaughter? But I'm innocent, I say. He gave me this look of shock, disbelief, not because he thought I was guilty, but because he knew what I did at the time. He knew black innocence is a myth. He knew it regardless of what was alleged, denied, proven, or disproven, the only good Negro is a dead Negro. Not only should I be found guilty, I'd be labeled a threat because before anything, I was black. So I decided to stop telling people I was innocent a long time ago. 
appreciate y'all brothers and sisters for letting me share. Hopefully I ain't taking too much time. A lot of work, but without further delay, uh, a brother all of us have been looking forward to hearing from. Our beloved brother was born in the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois, as stated before. He is an accomplished writer and author who published his first book in 2016 entitled No Father, No Excuse. Along with books, he has also successfully written stage plays and film scripts. Our brother is a motivational speaker, a trainer of men, and just an all-around beautiful soldier in the cause of Allah. He is the host of the trending and transcending podcast titled The People's Podcast, and you can go to subscribe to that on YouTube right now. You won't be disappointed. Currently, the brother is the founder and leader of the Drug Fighter Coalition of Men from Washington, D.C., known as the Dope Busters. Please welcome my brother, your brother, our brother, Brother Joshua L. Muhammad. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. As-salamu alaykum. It's, alaykum as -salamu alaykum. Honor, it's such an honor to be with you, brothers. Uh, to, tonight, I am extremely honored um, to be before you all. I want to first start off by saying, um, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came in the person of Master Prophet Muhammad, the long-awaited Mahdi, to whom praise is due forever, and that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the risen and exalted Christ, and that the Most Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan is, a, is indeed their Messiah in our midst. I would like to once again greet the chosen people of God and the greeting words of peace and paradise of as alaykum. Wa alaykum as sir. Wa alaykum as yes, I want to thank the meat both podcasts, the Meet the FOI podcast, as well as the I don't want to I don't want to say the say the words wrong, but both podcasts that invited me together. I'm extremely honored and humbled that you all would let me say a few words. I didn't get a y'all didn't nobody gave me a subject, so I would just speak from my heart about what I want to say uh, tonight. And I'm once again I'm I'm honored that you all would allow me to say a few words with you all, especially that you all are. Um, behind enemy lines right now, and, um, man, this is powerful. I've spoken all across the country and uh, in different platforms and in different arenas in front of world leaders and in the streets, everywhere, but I've never spoken to our brothers who are, um, you know, locked up, and I, I, I don't take it for granted. Words can't put it in, you know, I'm just very excited that I can speak to you all because I, I've interviewed so many brothers who have been, um, I shared one today on the People's Podcast page, a brother who was faced 30, who he was faced, he served 33 years on a life sentence. And I interviewed him. You know, once he got out, he was able to, you know, beat the case. And, but it made me think about, of course, whenever we think about prison, we automatically assume, you know, talk about Malcolm X and his transformation, his amazing transformation once he heard the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But I also reflect on the God who came 9,000 miles himself, Master Far Muhammad, who taught the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and asked him to come see him when he allowed himself to be in jail face-to-face -face so he can understand the plight of our people and the plight yes, of the taste to resurrect our people and that you all are walking in those same footsteps. And then it made me reflect on some of the guests that I've interviewed who, whose family were there when the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad was arrested, and he served five years in prison along with some of his children for not, um, what they, they said it was draft dodging, and they came up with all kinds of different things, but basically it was for, for having independent schools, Muhammad University of Islam. But if the risen and exalted Christ, a Georgia-born black man, could allow himself to serve five years in jail, in prison, I mean, my God, what was he saying to us that are that the uphill road for a black man is and woman in America? And then, I, of course, personally, my father served before he was a supreme captain, before he became very successful in business and then now student regional minister, but that he also is a felon and went to prison 
and it's like, man, my my father, my brother, so many black people, so and it's one in every family. It's like how we, man, this is our plight. This is what it is to be an American. But I, uh, it made me reflect in a good way about the power of prison and what can happen to the mind of those who choose to accept God in prison. What is it about prison that allows certain people to come out and just they take over? I know people who some some of us who went to college and they come out and we be like, man, that dude's soft, man, he lame, he weak. It's like it's like we don't give them the same respect. But then somebody come home from doing a bid who's accepted God and who got a certain kind of fire because it's feel like he the enemy tried to break him and he refused to break. That type of spirit, that type, that's that's in our ancestry. That that goes, that's in us. And some of us are in prison behind bars, and some of us are in invisible prisons outside that we just don't see the bars. But understand that you all have family and love, and that it's a different type of fight. But we in the same fight with the same common goal, and the same enemy who seeks to destroy us as a people. I want us to understand that, oh, yeah, oh yes, this is a very important point that I thought about. When the brother said, before anything, I am black. I appreciate that spoken word piece, brother. It was very touching because before anything, I am black. And that, that's, that's, that, that, struck a, that struck a chord with me because before I am a writer, before I am a man who's a podcast, a speaker, a trainer, and anything else, I'm black and I'm proud of the greatness of our, of that. I'm not a victim, and I don't want any of us to ever take that mindset because when once the God, once the originator created himself out of triple darkness, that was the end of victimhood. That was the proof that, that anything is possible. So no matter where we are in life, know that God is with us and that he can make a way and will make a way out of nowhere. And one of the things that I study with people who, who are in prison or who have been to jail is, the isolation and or being in the hole. I've talked to a lot of people who've been in the hole 23 hours a day, come out for an hour, this and that, all this inhumane treatment. And one of the things that I study is that when you ain't got nobody else, sometimes that's when we say our sincerest prayer and talk to God. When ain't no one else around, there's no baby mama, there's no girlfriend, no father, no mother, no brother, no sister, nobody else can hear our prayer and understand it. But God is right there, and that's when we are made and some men who won't break under pressure. There are certain things that God allows into our life, certain trials that nobody else can understand, and that's how God set it up. So, so yes, yeah, some of you all may come home and be like, man, y'all don't know what it's like. We're not, we not supposed to know what it's like. It's like you, know, you don't know what it's like. I live in a house. I came up, you know, with, four, with three siblings. None of them know what my reality is like, and nor do I know what theirs is like. Because each guy set it up that way so that he has a personal, we have a personal relationship with him when we can't depend on nobody else to validate our feelings, our emotions, or our experience. It is only the true and living God that we can depend on to fully understand what it's like to be us. Our true story, our redemptive, our redemptive spirit comes from God and God alone. I pray for you, brothers, who are behind bars, to have the spirit to know that God came to seek and to save you all and, no, and that no matter what you go through, he is real and he is in power and that he is with you and he, and that we will and that we are fighting for Islam and we will surely win. I want you all to understand that whether you all are fighting, there's a Navy, there's a Marine, there are Marines, there's um, Special Ops, there's the Army, but we all have different assignments, but we all are fighting for the same goal, and we will, and victory is promised to us according to the scriptures and the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So I'm very honored to speak to you, brothers, and I hope and pray that you don't break under the pressure. And I hope and pray that I don't break under the pressure of society on the outside, because many of so many you see many celebrities, many millionaires, Muslims, Christians. Right now, the pandemic, people are committing suicide. People are losing. Their mind, our mind, we are losing it. So right now, all that we have to hold on is the faith that God will see us through. And I'm a firm believer that no matter where we are in life, so is God, according to his book. So I wanted to just uh, share a few words from the scriptures. 
certain points that I wanted to make to you all today about not breaking. I've been blessed to be around the, the most honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan, my entire life and to study him, study his way, and to study not only when he's been, you know, dealing with his sickness, his pain, but facing death and death threats, me holding security, and knowing that we can lose our life at any time, but still holding, still pushing forward because God is real. And some of the things that have helped me to, to not give up or to not break in my life is studying certain scriptures. So I just wanted to share this story real quick with you all. Uh, some of the scriptures uh, that, uh, man, I just think every soldier should be reminded of. Uh, one of the stories, or one of the scriptures that is, is sticks out to me is, uh, I'm sure you all are familiar with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these three young men who uh, refused to bow down to a statue, bow down to anything, but specifically a statue other than a lot, other than God. And long story short, you know, I don't want to, you know, belabor the point, but long story short, the king, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, um, brought them from Israel to Babylon, and he, he built this 96-foot statue and had all the people, these musicians, play instruments and asked them to bow down to the statue because he was the king, and it was the statue of him. But these three brave believers in God refused to bow down, and he asked them once, then he asked them twice, then he said, okay, well, we're going to turn this oven on, and we're going to put you all in this oven if you all do not bow down to this statue. And they said, no, nah. they only bow down to God. They wouldn't bow down to anything else other than um, they wouldn't bow to a statue. So he put them in an oven. Well, the oven was so hot that when they opened the oven, two of the soldiers that actually opened the oven doors died. So then they put other soldiers in there. I mean, so, you know, to let them go into the, uh, to the oven. And then when he put these three men into the oven, they t- he said, turn it up seven times hotter since they wouldn't bow to me. And then they closed the oven door. But there was a hole where you can look in there. And when the king, it was supposed to be sizzling, I guess, cooking them or whatever. And when the king looked in, he didn't only, not only did he see three men untouched, but he saw four, he saw four men that were standing in there. And he gathered the other people around and said, now I know I'm not tripping. Didn't we put three men in this oven? They said, yes. He said, that fourth one looks like the son of God was standing there. And he opened it. He said, lift the oven back up. Open, let them come back out. And he, and he told everybody to bow in the presence of the God that they serve because only a God that they serve can stop them from feeling the intense heat of this oven. And when I think about that, that's a sign for us, especially, you know, soldiers in the Army of God, of when we are tried. We don't know what our trial will be. It might be prison. It might be death. No matter what it is, will we get – it might be money. It might be pain. It might be snitching. It might be just – it's death before dishonor is the code of a soldier. And when, when it's our trial, will we bow down to a statue or will we face – will we, will we stay, stay ten toes down to what we say we believe? Nobody is more deliberate and intentional than that of a man who believes in God. A God-fearing man who stands on his principles is favored in the eyes of the public, and even we are favored in the eyes of our enemies. Nobody wants to face somebody who's who's only scared of God. So as you brothers are behind the wall, I pray that you never bow to the statue or bow to anything, worship nothing other than the lot, because know that he's with you and that the most honorable minister of Farrakhan is, is here, and that Savior's Day, the War of Armageddon, uh, is now, and that the victory is ours. So please don't break. I'm praying for you, brothers. I'm praying for myself. I'm praying for my family. And I'm, praying for the, I'm praying for the soldiers all across the country, the believing men and women and children, that when it's our chance, to, when it's our turn to bow to a statue or get put in the oven, that we say death before dishonor because our prayer our sacrifice, our life, and our death are all for Allah, and that we don't break under pressure. I want, I want to pray in the name of Allah, the true and living God, that we understand who, how special you are and that though you may be in the hand of, an, of the ops or the oppressor, that God is there in God's hand. And so no matter how dark it gets, no matter if it's 23 hours, no matter what the time limit, no matter if it's a judge, if it's a CEO, whoever it is, 
they may have they may appear to have the authority, but God is the ultimate authority. And in the end of the day, He is the God of ju- He is the God that we serve, and and He's the true God of judgment. So whether you all, like the brother said, he was he wasn't guilty, or some people may be guilty. Some got caught, some didn't get caught. It doesn't matter. God didn't come to judge us for our sins. He came to remove us from the burden and of our sins and raise us up, for we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So our shortcomings is, is for him. It's none of none of our family members' job to judge, not my job to judge, none of us nobody's job to judge. And it's not it's not good for us to burden ourselves with guilt and shame. Every day I pray five times a day and we all all are praying together and we lay that burden down to God. So brothers don't burden yourself with whatever you've gone through, whatever you did or didn't do. God came to remove that and free us of that and make make us whole and new again. So no matter where you are in life, God is in control and the victory is ours. I pray that you all come out fighting, that you come out more brilliant, come out more fearless, and come. And I look forward to seeing you in person, inshallah, so that we can see the testimonies, because I have plenty of them that I know personally, but especially on the People's Podcast, people who come home and done amazing things, found love, got married, had children, did all kind of stuff, but because they didn't break under extreme pressure and they called on God and laid the burden at God, I pray that none of you all break under pressure, and I pray that I don't break under pressure because the lie is the only reality and the victory is ours, brother. Once again, I want, I just wanted to leave that with you all. The brothers didn't give me a subject. But my subject is is don't break under pressure, because um, God is with us, and it's definitely for the sign there. And I and I and I believe in that wholeheartedly, and that's been my testament in life, and that's been my reality. That's been the example that I've seen from my father and my uncles, the most honorable mentors of our time, believers all across the country, whether it's in Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Pan African, five percent piece of the guys, whatever it is. Those who believe and truly believe in what they in in their doctrine, they're going to be victorious to the extent that their doctrine can let them. And to Muslims, the sky's the limit. So uh, you know, I, I just say that. Hold fast to your uh, prayers. Shadowillah, illallah, Muhammadan, Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah. Trust me, and that you the victory is yours. I don't want to. I don't want to be long. I, I'm like my father, where I don't really like speaking long, but I just want to let you know that we are with you all. We have a support system. Whatever we can do, myself, my family, and the People's Podcast is right here with you all. And uh, please don't break under pressure, brothers. The victory is ours. Uh, As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum as-salam, sir. Wa alaykum as-salam, sir. The brother, that was beautiful. Um at this time, we'll be taking questions if the brother is open for questions. Anyone that may have any questions concerning anything he said, his journey um, in Islam, as you all heard, he said that he's been close to the minister, you know, um, on a lot of different occasions, really his, throughout his whole life. And that's something that me personally, um, I hold its top value because I mean that's why we do this. You know what I mean? That's that's the he is our reason why. He is our why. Every morning that we wake up, you know, it kind of reminds me of how in scripture, you know, it mentions this man, this one man, whom all of our faith hangs upon. You know, as Jesus told Peter that you know on this man. You know, on this on this man, on this rock, do I build my church? We know who, who really that's a fulfillment of. But, you know, brother, let me ask you personally, um, what are the most valued words of guidance could you say that you've ever received from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan personally that you know has been a strength to your personal foundation and walk? Yes, sir. Great question. Uh, well, yes, sir. Long story short, the uh, uh, most time Miss Louis Farrakhan told me uh, when I one, one on one occasion when I saluted him, he said, "There goes my soldier." And I, you know, saluted him and said, "Yes, sir." 
and he he was dealing with an issue. Uh, some somebody was complaining about something dealing with me, um, some things that I said, and he said, "Brother, go over, under, and through the competition, through the trial, and the, the victory is yours." But he said, "Go over, go under, and go through." When he said go through, and I and I was I was all humble, but I was like, "Yes, sir," because it just meant like, man, go through it. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like, all right, I can go over it. I can go around it. But he was basically saying meet it head on and go through it. And I just, that's, that's, that seems to be uh, the story of my life, like going through it. Like no matter what I'm faced, every day something new, but I want to go over it. I want to, I want to you know, go around it. And sometimes you got to just go through it. you got to face it and step on it in the name of a lot. But, yes, sir, that was, that was one of the best examples that he's ever, uh, advice that he's given me um, was to go over under and through it. And I was like, yes, sir. All praise due to Allah. That's beautiful. Go through. Uh, you no, know, it, it's a saying that the only way to get through is to go through. So uh, uh, always the most perfect wisdom coming from the minister. Um, are there any more questions, comments, concerns? Anybody want to? Say anything or comment on how beautiful the brother's deal was, or uh, say anything that uh, was came to mind while the brother was building. I do uh, have a comment though um, on the bed. Uh, you know, we we appreciate you coming on again. The death before dishonor. Don't break under pressure. I mean, it sounds. It sounds simple, and those are like that's why it's so, so, um, I guess rooted because you know it, it's in simplicity. You know, what I'm saying you find success. Um, you made me think about the power of prison when you were talking about the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and how he went to prison to go through what his people would have to go through. How he placed himself, and it's interesting because there was a time when, you know, um, prison had like this bad label on it, kind of. It still does, but like back in the day, it was like a real bad label on prison. When you think of prisoners, you thought of the worst of the worst, the scum of the earth. But um, just like Elijah Muhammad, there was a time when our people – went to prison, and we were wear as a badge, like Elijah yeah. Muhammad, Martin Luther King, um, Malcolm X once he went through the process, but there were some that went to prison in righteousness. And yes, there's also so many others that went to prison, and even when they weren't righteous, came out righteous. I did things righteous while in prison, even if they didn't make it out, like uh, the Solidarity Brothers, George Jackson. Um, but also, even though uh, just to talk about our, our people and how ingenuity we are and how we can switch things, how we don't break under pressure, the word nigger, and, you know, we don't, we don't necessarily use baby language or the word nigger, but and the word nigger was used, well, originally, if you go back, niggas and all that, uh, was king, and we had our other words for it, but nigga was used as a word to put us down. It had this connotative sense that it was it was some scum of the earth bad, but um, brothers in the hood took it and turned it into something of a term of endearment and took it from us so much and dare other people that were of their people to use it at a time. So I just appreciate um, our people's tenacity, kind of, even with the use of, of pork back in the day, during slave days, we used to get the intestines and the worst of the worst, and our yes, sisters who are queens and alchemists in the kitchen, they took the worst of the worst and turned it into something that was nutritious and that would bring us life, light, and energy. So it's just a testament to our people, and I appreciate um, your words. You may, you may be think and reconsider, well, consider and think about how, you know, our people are so tenacious, even though, you know, we still shouldn't be on the port no more. 
like like the brother Nuri say, that's slave food, not soul food. But now that we know better, we should be able to do better. Um, but what what do you think about that? Are there any other instances that you could think of how people ingenuitively like became alchemists and turned something that was negative into something that was positive or something that was beautiful? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, for example, um, speaking of prison, when the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, one of his cellmates um, was sent to kill him in prison, named Jeremiah Shabazz. Uh, of course, it, you know, he's a legend. He became a legend. But what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad converted him in prison, he was his cellmate. But he, his, he said his intention was to absolutely kill the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. But he wound up converting him to Islam. And then he came out and became a menace in the East Coast and did such great things. And it's like you, you, you want to talk about the power of the mind or uh, uh, that could have went a whole other way. But it's like the, the word of God and when he met him face to face, he was like, oh, I know who this man is. And he became one of the great ministers, but his intention was wrong. He, he, was, he, did, he didn't know better. And, uh, yeah. Jeremiah Shabazz and the story of him going to prison with the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Hey, be to Allah. Is there any other questions? Because, um, you know, we have a brother on tonight that has a very richness um, when it comes to his networks. And um, that's something that I was just thinking of when you recited that aspect of the history because a lot of brothers and sisters don't really know those details about, you know, the exalted Christ and the things that he experienced, you know, when he was incarcerated. So um, my question would be, you know, briefly, if you can answer it, um, being on post for the Son of Man in our midst, you know, we're living in a time where the enemy has his head up a lot these days. You know, he's looking into the skies, and we see, you know, always breaking news of, um, these things is flying in the sky, these unidentified flying objects, as they refer to them. Have you ever had an opportunity to uh, see a wheel or a mother plane or a baby plane, rather? Uh, great question. Uh, to answer your question, no, sir, I don't look in the sky. I, I know that they're real. I believe in them. And of course, my father's written books about it and, uh and I've, I have a whole series on YouTube with so many people who experience. It's just I just know I just know that that's the reality. I've seen the cloud. I, I know that the weather changes. I know that when we walk, I'm not no crazy person. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I act crazy, but I ain't no fool. I don't you know I don't be wearing a bulletproof vest, a just as else, and all of this. You know, we were doing security, and um, the minister got death threats at um, uh, Tuskegee. And he was supposed to be like a motorcycle gang was supposed to come down when he was supposed to teach. And it was all this. It was a big thing. And I, I'm, the reason, the main reason I didn't, I wasn't nervous is not because I just think I can kill everybody in sight, though that's a part of it. It's just like I know who backs him. I know, this, I know the reality. If we study history, man, leaders can get wiped out at the drop of a dime. From move to Black Panthers to like you, the brother was speaking with his uh, spoken word about Cointel Pro, man. If it wasn't from, if there was no reality above our above our head, there, then there wouldn't be no nation of Islam. Bottom yes, line, sir. period. There's no way. It ain't, it ain't us. It's it's not because we it's not because we drill so well. It's not because we you know our our army is so strong. Like just because we strong. That ain't, yeah, come on, please. What are we talking about? There has to be, uh, the most I'm so far I can speak to, one of my favorite quotes, there's an army you see and an army you don't. It has to be a part of the army that you don't. Because the army that you see, though it's strong and brave, yeah, I mean, come on, you know, <laughs> you ain't talking about it. Look at the country, please, what are we saying? So every day, every day I put an FY uniform on or wear a suit and bow tie or go somewhere and say, my name is Joshua Little Muhammad and and promote the idea on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, the, mo the fact that we're on this conference all right now talking about 
that we believe that we're the chosen people of God. We believe that he came. Most of us so far kind of this and that. If, if, if they're not this and that, then we wouldn't be here. That's all I'm going to say. In, the, in, in less than three hours, everybody who, who, who ever said anything against any, spoke out against the government, spoke out against any institution would be dead. Like, like America has that power. So I, like my, my belief is that the reason they haven't moved on us or been effective on a, on a large scale or the reason that presidents, uh, man, they don't try with the, with the minister or with us is because they know what 5% of us know and that the 85 doesn't know. And that is, in fact, the reality of who's on the wheel and, our, and their connection to us. That has to be it. That's, that's, I, that's, that's I stand on that. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam, sir. Assalamu alaikum salam. I'm Brother Khalifa. Uh, Brother Joshua, my question to you will be, uh, in, uh, in the Nation of Islam Prison Reform Ministry, it's like our job to give an inmate an enlightenment of who he or she is in reality and not what they have become because of circumstances. A lot, a lot of us are uh, surrounded by various different types of circumstances. Some, some of our circumstances, as they would say uh, in classification, what they class us up to be would be robbers, murderers, rapists, killers, drug dealers, and stuff like that. Yes. And you, you were saying that um, a key factor that the, that, the, that the minister gave you was to go you know, over, around, and through. And, and and it sounds like the characteristics of an FOI. But my question to you would be, you know, as far as being in the mosque on the streets, and I don't know if you've been incarcerated, but I, I, I would like to know what type of tactics or maneuvers or skills that you guys use when it comes to strengthening the social fibers of the mosque. Yes, sir. Great question. And you're saying the fibers of the mosque in in prison or outside of prison? Well, it, in prison and outside. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, I've interviewed, and of course, I grew up with the children of uh, student minister Abdullah Muhammad, you know, the prison reform minister, and I've interviewed him, of course, and plenty of believers who um, who have great prison stories. So when it comes to that, I just leave the leave that to the those who that's their specialty, that's their expertise. But as far as outside of the mosque, um, brotherhood, spending time with your brother, because the most time so far kinda of teaches that love is the mother of all emotions. So when you love it, we we have to have more in common than the hate for the same enemy or the hate for the same op or the hate for the same person. But the love of the brotherhood and the love of God will naturally create the willingness to fight, defend, kill, protect cover down for someone. So the more we spend time with each other in righteousness, doing right, that natural bond of a brotherhood, that bond in love will 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 help us protect and make a mighty army. So it has to be built on uh, love and the spirit of brotherhood. That's that's the standard out here. Now now once again in on the inside I'm I've interviewed plenty of people who I'm sure they can tell you great stories you know, very similar. But ultimately, whether it's a gang, it's a nation, it's religion, it's brotherhood. It is ten toes down. This is you gotta watch my back. We all yeah. we got. You know what I'm saying? That that those same principles are across everything. It's the same thing. You know what I'm saying? So I got I got mentors who are alphas, GDs, vice lords, black crits, bloods, Republicans, Democrats. You know, it's all. You know what I'm saying? Whatever everybody gang affiliation or representation, Masons, Shriners, whatever it is, at the at the heart of it. If it's effective, it's brotherhood. It's teamwork. Yes, sir. It's unity. You know what I'm saying? That's the bottom line. It's us versus them, and we all in. I hope I answered the question. Thank you, That's perfect. Yes, sir. Uh, Dear brother, you talk about the reality of God and, um, you know, that it's power and force and how um, if it wasn't for God, uh, whose proper name is the Father who appeared in the person, and like, there's no way that we could be in the position that we are. You, um, 
which I mean it co- it correlates and coincides with the story of the three Hebrew boys that you talked about that was thrown in the fiery furnace, but still the the furnace it it didn't hurt them. And um make no mistake, like we we are in a modernized breaking point. Like this is an actual breaking point where they go through all type of uh, mental procedures right now is, is more mental and spiritual and emotional than anything else. Uh, and sometimes it gets physical too, but we going through the, the those breaking point statuses, but the brothers here have not broken. Uh, so to your point, we, we haven't, and I think that's all praise due to a lot of us. We couldn't do it without God for real, for real, all this stuff that uh, we've been going through. And sometimes, even when it seems like we don't have no help, it's just us. Um, we know, even when we don't see the fourth, that there's someone there that's protecting us when it comes to the reality of God. Uh, my question is, uh, we, we also seeing it like, in the news, you, you spoke on how uh, people are going crazy um, post the pandemic. How, like I, I think I heard of a <clears throat> of one of the senators. They checked themselves in for mental health issues. You got people that have killed themselves. Um, it's it's interesting how there was like no attention on isolation. And um, basically, the circumstances that we are put under in the prison, how we spread that way through a play. Once is well, once once we're not let go, it seems like the weather's going crazy. Um, just all type of signs that were of that time, as Brother Jamar mentioned too. Um, God's ways don't change. If he did this for this people during this time, then why wouldn't he do it during this time, even if we pay attention to it or we don't? But we having all these calamities, Ukraine and Russia at war right now, and the war um, again is begun, so I'm waiting to see what the minister's going to say on. I know how, uh, what the fall of America says, so I'm pretty sure how, to, how we're going to be pulled into it, but I'm still waiting on the minister to give his directives on it, but what do you think about this day and age and the um the time what must be done and the things that are going on in the world with the weather and everything else? Yes, sir. Uh, great, great question. And like you said, I'm waiting for um, the crowning event of Black History Month to hear the Savior's Day address so I can hear exactly what the minister, uh, most of the far kind of thoughts are on the time that we live in. Mm-hmm. I do know that studying the scripture, there'll be wars and rumors of war, and that mm-hmm. these are the signs of the the war of Armageddon. And it's not like a like it's just a statement that we use. Like, no, this is we are witnessing the end of one world while the rise of another war, uh, another world. So that's right. I'm very, so I'm very, um, you know, the, the shock of hours, the grievous thing. Where do you go very to see it? And I'm Praying and you know prayerful, but I know that the victory is ours. I don't get caught up in the how we gonna win, you know when we gonna win. I just know that we will win to share a lot in His name because that's His will. So you know maybe we we on you know the internet every day trying to figure out this and that. that means, I, people, I, I enjoy people's uh, breakdown. I just I just try to keep it as simple as possible. We gonna win. As long as God, you know, we stay in God's favor to the best of our ability because the victory is ours. And I just know that it's going to come. And whether it's a spiritual fight, a physical fight, a mental fight, like you were saying, as long as we're doing our best to stay spiritually fit, mentally fit, and physically fit, that we'll be in a position to do the best that we can when our number is called. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Yes, sir. Uh, this is Brother Alonzo, X and the FYI podcast. Um, I always try to wait a while to let, you know, brothers get questions out before I make, you know, a comment. But I, I do, you know, I hear your father and your voice, brother. 
because I, you know, I'm from Chicago, so I, I, I you know, uh, I, you know, I used to always hear him say, you know, hit to the wise and sufficient. You know, he always had to drop those jewels here and there, whatever. And he was a, a very beautiful, he's a very beautiful brother. And so, you know, I hear that in you, you know, and that's a, that's a beautiful thing. And one of the things I just wanted to mention is that when we were talking, when the brother had asked about how do you build the fabric of the thread of the brotherhood, it's happening right now. You know, when you have brothers who take time and everybody that comes on to to spend that time to listen and or to comment and those who take the time to come out and drop a few words here and there, all of this is part of the building and that communion that we have with one another because at the end of the day, you know, I can't I can't I can't walk with my brothers, I can't talk with my brother. You know what I'm saying? If I if I can't dialogue with my brother and, and on you know, we talk about sports, we talk about this, talk about that. Okay. Think about what we're talking about on this line. Okay. Think about what you brothers talk about when you're not on this line. Okay. You're talking about things that's you are talking about things that that's actually cultivating, you know, the, the that spirit your spirituality, your mentality. You know, and so that's that's a beautiful thing. So I just wanted to, you know, make that little comment as far as that's concerned. And it's, it's just beautiful just to see the process and the progress of this. And it's a lot more work to go, but, hey, but we're doing it. I'm going to let go. I'll let you sir. All praise due to Allah. I'll let you sir. All praise due to Allah. This is great. Um, I'm grateful as well to uh, just be on the line with all of you brothers, all of you listeners, everyone that has um, raised a question for our brother and given feedback in terms of what we have because, as our dear brother Joshua stated, um, as this hour gets darker, as this hour that we are living in begins to, you know, um, intensify and it gets darker and darker, we, we will have to really begin to ask ourselves, you know, how how strong is our foundation? You know, uh, kind of this whole discussion, rather, um, everything that the brother said kind of reminds me of that question that's posed to us in Steady Guide number uh, 18, I think, and as well, um, a couple of Savior's Days, the Armour Mills and Lewis Farrakhan took up this topic, and I think it was in Detroit once. Um, at a Savior's Day when he was speaking on this particular topic and, you know, he began to actually um, speak about, ironically, the time that we're living in now, all the way in 14, and he was saying things such as, you know, when uh, the centurions, you know, put their hands on Jesus in Scripture, how Peter drew a sword and Upon Peter drawing this sword, you know, this is where we get the verse from Jesus telling Peter that, you know, uh, he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. And, you know, it's no time for that. Basically, in other words, you know, put that up for right now because what's happening with me has to happen so that other things can be fulfilled. Um, Just along those same lines, you know, that should let us know the seriousness of the time that we're living in as the brother cited uh, the God when he came at a certain point in time, the authorities uh, found found Master Farad Muhammad and they arrested him, you know, put him, put him away in jail for some time and the same thing happened with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad during a time when America was about to prosecute a war. Now, today we see on the news constantly, you know, America insinuating war with China, Russia in war with Ukraine, Ukraine uh, absolutely begging for help and begging for an ally in America. So we know, as our dear brother Dawood said, we're convinced that America will be pulled into this war based on what fall of America tells us. But... I just wanted to say those things because, you know, uh, this is where we are at in time, and uh, the true believer, you know, will be known um, in this time. And I thank a lot for all of us because we are showing characteristics of a true believer, you know, in saying the things that we're saying um, on this call. Brother Joshua, um, if you have any comments in relation to that, that brother, I would love to hear it. Um, so I'm like, 
uh, Blake and Salam, sir. And once again, thank you all for your questions. Thank you all for this conversation. I'm very honored. Um, dealing with Peter and, of course, Jesus in this time period, uh, one of the things that I I'm known for and have been known for since I was a child is drill. And uh, being a drill instructor and training young men and men, period, in the ranks and outside of the ranks is discipline. And learning that discipline, learning how to hear and to hear and obey and the command that can save our life. So when whenever we, I mean, I'm always in, you know, fight mode, but when you want security, whether for the most I'm supposed to fire kind of for the people, period, the believers, or just on your day-to-day, exactly. knowing when to fight and when not to fight can okay. save our life. And knowing that he, the minister, one, one, of his, one time we was, uh, he was speaking, and he was saying what he had to go through. You know, he's like, if they arrest me, they got to do this and that. And somebody was like, nah, brother, man, it's not you. And he was like, yes, me. I tell you all, don't. If they come to arrest me, let them arrest me. God is in control. And I'm thinking like, yes, sir. You know, I'm a soldier. I'm a hearing obey. It's like drill. You know, don't do it. But in my heart, I'm saying like, man, that's a trial because everybody's going to look at me like, man, you just let them. But that's, that's our trial is to see. What happens, because that, if, if that's who he is in the book, we got to let certain things happen. And as soldiers, we got to just watch it and know that Crazy. the victory is ours. And so as long as we can be disciplined and have faith, yeah. regardless of what it appears when that he's going through, dealing with the crucifixion, or what yeah. he is going through and yeah. has been going through being crucified, as long as we uh, have hold on our faith, we're going to win in the end. Turn me over, it's like. Oh, uh, uh, praise. I'd like to remind uh, all of the listeners um, on the line to please mute your phone if you're not the speaker at the time. Um, please mute your phone if you're not speaking at the time. Uh, are there any more questions or comments, uh, any feedback that anybody would like to give? I do have a um I would like for the brother to explain the 5%, the 85%, and the 10%. Um, But before you do that, I wanted to make a comment on what you said about drill and how you had to uh, hear and obey and how important it is to be obedient and a listener. Uh, I don't know if uh, people watch, like, movies like I watch movies, but... There's this movie, Jason Bourne. Um, it's in the, like, Bourne Identity, Bourne Supremacy series. And uh, exactly. he was trying to save this guy. And in trying to save the guy, he's talking on the earpiece, and the brother, he can't, he doesn't see the brother, but he hears the brother, and he's telling him which way to go because he has a bird's eye view of where he's going, and there's an enemy or a threat after him. So the brother is scared, and the brother's going through a crowd, and he's telling him to turn left. Turn this way. Stop. Hide behind this. And the minute the brother listens or goes with his feelings instead of listening to the person with the bird's eye view and try and runs off because he thinks he knows better, the brother shot. And does it get saved? So I just think about that in 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 terms of I always think, you know, I I can't see everything clearly like being in my feelings, being in my emotions, being in like this one situation. I may not have the foresight to physically see past my situation, but if I listen clearly to the voice of Allah, uh, to the guidance that has come before me, um, in this instance, we could say the guidance of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, even if I don't see myself out of it like this can lead and guide me to where i need to be but uh i just want to make that comment if you could brother can you explain the five percent the 85 percent and the ten percent for the brothers and sisters that don't know what that is absolutely yes sir i will explain it i will give you give it to you verbatim uh what we study uh what we've been taught through supreme wisdom and then try to explain it as well thank you sir um, well, the first question is, well, who is the 85%? The uncivilized people, poison animal eaters, slaves from mental death, and 
power, people who do not know the living God or their origin in this world, and they worship that that they know not what who are who are easily led in the wrong direction but hard to lead in the right direction. That is the eighty five percent, the ten percent, the rich, the slave the rich, the slave makers of the poor, who teach the poor lies to believe that the almighty, true and living God is a spook and cannot be seen by the physical eye, otherwise known as the blood suckers of the poor. Who is the five percent in the poor part of the earth? Uh, answer. Okay, here we go. They are the poor, righteous teachers who do not believe in the teachings of the ten percent and are all wise and know who the living God is, and teach that the living God is the Son of Man and the Supreme Being, the Black Man of Asia, and teach freedom, justice, and equality to all the human family of the planet Earth, otherwise known as civilized people, also as Muslim and Muslim sons. All right. Okay. So in layman's terms. Uh, who the 85, 10, and 5 are. The 85 are the people who want to argue all the time, fight, basically act savage, who have been robbed of, a, of our name, language, culture, and don't know any better. The majority, the majority of the people also, I want to be clear, that there's no color distinction given in the supreme wisdom. So the 85% can mean any people, but specifically when they're dealing with black people, they're dealing with that as well. But the 85 are just people who do not know. They just do not know is bottom line. They do not know in an easily led wrong direction instead of the right direction. The ten percent of people who who know, who have the knowledge of good and evil, God and the devil, and just choose to exploit the eighty five percent. most of the time the ten percent because they're the blood suckers of the poor have money and are successful and use that money to, you know, you know, lord over the eighty five. The five percent, well, the best example of course is the nation of Islam. Those who are outside teaching and throwing truth and falsehood constantly, whether it be online, in person, in prison, uh, on the corner selling the final call, constantly saying who telling people the truth, the time of what it is, the truth of God, and of course exposing the devil and Satan, aka Satan, constantly. So I hope I did a good job of explaining it. Eighty-five, ten, and five. Most definitely. All praise due to the Lord, dear brother. Um, again, we appreciate you, dear brother Dawood. That was a beautiful question. While he was speaking on that, it actually made me think of, um, you know, Moses and his attempt to civilize savages, you know, in the caves throughout Europe. Um, as he was taught, or, or as we were taught, rather, he was sent to do. Um, but it made me think of a more modern aspect of that work because we know that today um, we have a Moses and Aaron among us with a similar similar duty or a similar job. Um, as it relates to that, brother, what kind of what kind of instructions and words of encouragement could you give to us? Because as the minister says, you know this is the hardest job ever given to any man. So we know that we and we are approaching the month of Ramadan. What type of instruction could you give us in terms of, you know, first resurrecting the dead God within? You know, I wouldn't say dead God, but that God that lays dormant or untapped. You know, what are some, if you could succinctly, you know, give some points to how you start your morning, how you start your day to becoming successful in the, in the calls, um, whether it be prayer, reading, um, or whatever, but steps to just activate that God. And when you fall, things that you do to get back up, because we know, you know, we all struggle. So the human side of Joshua, you know, when you fall, bro, how, how do you get back up? So I'm like, Welcome to my sir. Excellent question. Well, the first thing that I do besides prayer, because I'm so social media or whatever, and grab my phone, right? But instead of just, like, listening to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, I try to put happy music on. I'm a big musician. Anybody who's in people's podcasts, I'm into music because I'm an actor, I'm a writer, so I'm always going to try to put happy songs on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm always trying to put – I can't put my war killing – I can't put Future on when I first wake up. I can't put no fight music, no, like, Tupac or nothing like that. I have to put real – I try to stay in as happy place as I can when I get started, because the, the reality of my life is 
I've been taught my whole life is to spare the female, kill the male. So I go outside every day with a warlike reality. So I, so at home, I got to have peace. I got to be at peace at home. So at home, I'm always trying to listen to happy stuff, watch happy stuff on TV, happy stuff and move comedy. I try to stay at a peace, even with the lectures I choose from, from the most common Miss Louis Farrakhan or other preachers or pastors or motivated, motivational speakers. I'm very intentional that it's a uplifting message. I don't try to say, you know, you doom and gloom, victims, we doom to hell, we're going it. No, I don't know. I don't believe, no. That's not my, no, I'm not tapping into that. I tap into we are the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. My God will make a way out of no way. That's, that's, the, type of, that's the type of lectures I listen to, fear, faith, and truth. Like, no, we can overcome it all. The victory is ours. I can't listen to anything that makes me walk with fear and doubt. I got to erase that from my own reality. I start up every day with that. And then when the trial hit, which they do weekly, daily, monthly, and yearly, when they hit me, man, I lay down. I take it like a G, but I play football. I fought. You know, I'm in the martial arts. So I know how to go to the corner. You know, anybody who watched boxing or something, or UFC, I know how to go to the corner, get that chair, get, get the cup, man, woo, 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 and come back out there to fight another day by the grace of God. But when I go to that chair, I just remember, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, why, you know what I'm saying? Why this? Why that? And no matter what happened, as long as I don't give up, as long as I don't give up or give in, then I fight another day because, I, listen, I think a lot of, I'm not what I, I don't look like what I've been through. You know what I'm saying? And I know there's the same thing that you all understand. It's like we done been through hell. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we, as long as I can remember it's going to be better tomorrow, that's what I focus on to answer your question. I'm all about self-improvement, but I'm in a constant state of peace. Big into sports, big into video games, big into whatever I can do positive, positively to stay because the reality of the work, bills, love, all, ever so much other trials, I got to be as happy as I can to, before I walk out into a world where the majority of people are threatened by me or afraid of me or whatever it is or whatever is going on. But I be, but that don't affect, but I'm in my own zone. And the most I'm as far as I teaches and has taught us that we carry our own atmosphere within us. So, you know, as the scriptures say, try not try the spirit. So we, we, we can we can affect and control our own spirit, our own personality. But we have that effect where others are like, What's wrong with you? I mean, you need to go start, restart your day. You need to go back in the room and make an adjustment. So I literally have seen I do it to myself all the time, but I see it with other people as well. I can I'm like, nah, my niece and nephew's coming over and I can't I gotta put on a show. I can't be sad and put them in, man, you don't know what it's like to be a black man. You don't know what it's like. It's hard out here. Nigga, this rule. No, nah, no, nah, no, sir. Hey, there they go. I saw my leg up. I got to do that, and we have the power to do that. Go back in our corner, lay down. Before you said a real example, my mother, uh, Sharifa Muhammad, this was like two years ago. Once we were doing the funeral arrangements for her, I got a call from my mentor, someone who I admired. And he was basically telling me, he said, he said, everybody, he said, your father is going to be hurt because of your mom and your siblings and everything. And I understand you might cry. He said, but don't let nobody see you cry. Now, he's telling me this the day before I did the janazah of my mother. And he said, man, you can't let nobody see you cry. And he's a soldier, and you know what I'm saying? And he understand the, how to say it to me in a way where he know it's concerning, but he like, you can't, you the face of it. Even though, even though it's your dad's wife and all that. The, people, the nation going to be looking at you. You can't fold under pressure. And that, that, I took that to heart. I'm like, oh, yes. I mean, I didn't plan on crying anyway, but you still, it was like, nah, behind the scenes, we're going to do what we do. But when I came out, a law walked by. I called on him. My sister's looking at me. They're like, man, shit, Josh going to break it. You know, he loves his mama. You know what I'm saying? No, you only get one mama. Every, any girl I ever talked to, that boy, that boy loves his mama. You know what I'm saying? He'll fight. He fought most of his fights over his mom. But it's like when that when it was my time because everybody gonna have a trial with their moms and whatever their parents and whatever. But when it was my mother, I called on the same God that I called on every other day, and by the grace of God, He helped me get through it. Though it's an ongoing thing, and though I always miss moms and love and all that, when it's when it when he, the reality hit that she ain't right there, you can't text her, make jokes, and call. You gotta call on God. Period. And that's my reality. 
if I want to think about my mom's, I put on some happy movies that we used to watch together, put on some Home Alone or something like that. Yeah, me and my mom just was sing the OJs or something. Yeah, my mom's love that. She love this, or, you know, she love the style of whatever the song is. But as a believer, I, I try to not break when God presents trials in our life. I hope I answered your question, sir. Oh, man, oh, good brother, that was... That was that was. I want to just make a uh, comment, dear brother Dawood. I know you probably got something else, but that that was beautiful, bro. And um, anytime anyone shares anything with me personally of their personal life and personal struggles that's very heartfelt, I take it to heart because I look at that as God trying to absolutely give us all something that we may need at certain points of our life. And um, it's ironic that you mentioned your mom, and may Allah be pleased, and Allah is well pleased with that mighty soldier. Um, uh, my mother is actually battling with something that we see very prevalently plaguing the black community right now on um, councils, um, prostate uh, with men and breast cancer and other councils uh, with women are uh, absolutely destroying our community. Uh, because of this enemy that we live under. Um, uh, I think it's absolutely necessary, as the brother said, um, and I think that we all should try to extract the principles out of what he's saying of how through it all, you know, he's relied on his faith in Allah that things will get better. Things are working for the greater good. And the lecture he referred to, Fear, Faith, and Truth, by the Honorable Nelson Lewis Farrakhan, man, like, we've been given so much. And as the scripture says, you know, those who walk in darkness have indeed seen a great light. And uh, let us let us just embrace the light, brother. Um, that's absolutely the purpose of these calls, um, to encourage us to embrace what we've been given, to take it and apply it, because... Um, I heard the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan last night on a YouTube short, and he was saying uh, that, you know, during this time, in this in this war, this last one that's going to be the end of all wars, he said that we should just try to survive. He said just survive, you know. And what have we been given as a survival kit? You know, we have five principles in Islam. The first one, um, we know, um, is belief in Allah. If I've gotten nothing else from this call, you know, that's what I've gotten because as a brother gave me the analogy when I was a young Muslim of David, and he had five stones of which he could have slew Goliath with this giant, this magnificent uh, opposing obstacle in front of him. He only used one out of those five. And a brother told me that that one represented the belief in Allah. So all praise due to Allah, dear brother. Again, we thank you. We thank Allah for soldiers like you because as it gets dark and the sunlight removes itself from our midst, it is the stars that adorn the heavens, the constellation of the heavens that we would have to look to for our light. And we thank you for sharing some of your unique light. You've always been yourself since I followed you on social media, and that's important to us. To just know how to be ourselves. You got to mimic, you know, you can mimic righteousness. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, be you too at the same time. We appreciate that about you, dear brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, say. The honor is mine. Oh, praise due to Allah. Uh, are there any more questions? Oh, yes, I have a question. This is Sister Amira. Um, as we speak about calling on Allah in moments of um, pressure and, you know, not breaking into pressure and reminding ourselves the power of our mind through it all, as I hear you speak of your mothers, both of you brothers, I ask, I'm wondering, brother, what is your opinion or your viewpoint of the woman of Islam? Like, how do we, how do you view our role in supporting, you know, our brothers, our fathers, our sons, you know, our other brothers of Islam, um, when those moments of pressure uh, arise. 
Great question, ma'am. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, for your question. Um, well, the way the woman, 75% of the work is taught by the teachings of the most Muslim realized Muhammad is taught to the most Muslim as far as time is with the woman. The woman is valuable, very extremely valuable. And for me, personally, especially you know, my mom and my sisters, the way uh, I've seen her, the women in my life, the women in Islam, um, of course, uh, sisters, Dr. Minister Avril, who I've had the honor of interviewing multiple times, asking her about uh, the role of the woman being close to Mother Khadija Farrakhan, seeing the wives. And one of the main things that I've always seen uh, in the role of the woman specifically in supporting the black man is the balance, right, like the freedom is, is the star and the crescent, the balance to a man who's fighting at war, the majority, there are certain, okay, let me give you this. There are certain branches of the Marines that in order to be a part of them, you have to be married. And the reason that is is because a man who is in love or who has a woman to fight for fights differently than a man who doesn't. And that's one of the things that in 2023, uh, dealing with gender wars and you know, I don't need you and you don't need me is completely false, completely wrong, because the woman's role in every great man who is whether it's his mother and or the sister, the wife, that woman has been right there, has played a pivotal role in his outlook of going to war. So the moment that we understand that we are at war, and most people don't want to deal with that, now, we, we shouldn't be at war with each other, but when we understand that there is an active enemy who seeks to wipe us off the face of this earth, man and woman, rich or poor, Muslim, Christian, Jew, whatever, but when we understand how that, that woman is right there, the most overly used breakdown is always slavery. But it's 400 years, you know what I'm saying, since 1555, so it's something that we can, we can address. I just, it's so easy to do with the analogies and metaphors, but it was the black woman who was, when we were getting whipped and got off of getting whipped or that whipping pole, whatever, it was that black woman who was right there putting, putting the, helping us with the healing, the wounds of that thought of that whip in our back. It was the black woman doing the recent black lives marches and all of these things. I've seen this up close and personal doing security too, where somebody get maced, and the man reaching for everything in his eyes, trying to put it out, but don't know what to put on the face and how, what, don't use water, don't use this. But the woman right there, right, to have that, to be right there is a powerful, women just have, to answer your question, ma'am, you're very important. And once we understand, especially according to the, that's what makes it so crazy when people don't understand how the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad promote, the black man is God, but also promote the value of the woman simultaneously because the secret of God, according to most of school as far as can be found in a woman. Once we understand that, once we understand how important the minister making Dr. Minister Ava his national spokes, you know, spokesperson, why that's so important. A woman in a religion period, but especially in Islam, shows you how valuable she is, how valuable women are, that you all see a side of God and represent a side of us that we don't even want to touch, get into because we've been trained our whole life to just kill, go to work, and come home. So people can, uh, somebody can see me taking, like, fight, oh, yeah, Josh, he, all he did was fight. Yeah, that's all I know. But drill, but what about the plays, the acting? See, that's the, one, that's the woman side of me. That's me having to, I tell this story, I played football and did karate. That's all I was doing. Until one day, I saw all of the girls in school going to be in a play called The Wiz. And because I saw the women, these young girls, I'm like, oh, man, look at all the girls who we think is fine. They doing theater. They doing act. Oh, man, y'all, we need to do this. The dudes I was with, like, nigga, man, hell no, we ain't going over here. I said, wherever the women going, well, that's where I'm going. And I, that's how I got into acting and theaters because it's like they represent, we only, basically, <laughs> If the woman is smart and the woman is where she needs to be and on her, then it's only going to make us want to impress you all. So when the woman is on her square and the woman is in her nature, it's going to put us in our nature. 
is that's just how it is. So the woman is very important. If you can see, if you study a family, you look at the women, you look at like, oh, hey, hey there, wait, who's the woman? Who is he talking to? Oh, yeah, that, that explains everything you need to know. And, it, and it's unfair that 75% of the work is with the woman, but that's how powerful the woman is. So to answer your question, the woman is extremely powerful and extremely valuable. It's just that we as men have to get on ours and, and it's through the woman that you can help be patient with us while we get ourselves together and all that. But, man, if it, if it wasn't for women, men wouldn't even train. We, we, we wouldn't even uh, buy new boxes if it wasn't for women. I hope that makes sense. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you. All praise due to Allah. We all taught that, you know, as the brother said last week as well, that when you train a man, you train an individual. But when you train a woman, you're training a whole nation. So um, that was a beautiful build on how important the women are, dear brother. We appreciate you for coming on and sharing your wisdom, knowledge, understanding, experience, just sharing space and time with us. Um, we appreciate every caller for coming on and sharing space and time with us to try to make this a success because uh, don't make no mistakes about it. This is for us both behind invisible walls and the visible walls is for all of us because uh, we can't really make any leeway without each other. Uh, with that said, are there any questions, any more questions out there? We're coming on the 829 mark, which means we have exactly 60 seconds left. So are there any last comments? Brother Jamaic, do you want to say something on us going out? Yes, sir. Um, again, Brother Joshua, thank you. Um, all praise is due to Allah. Happy Savior's Day to everyone abroad uh, this call. And I will hope that if we don't know what that means, that we will seek to understand that. And may we all, may we all listen, prepare our minds and hearts for what our beloved minister will say to us next Sunday. And may Allah bless us all with the light of understanding. Again, thank you to Brother Joshua. Some love you. and smile, family. May Allah bless you all. Brother Joshua, any closing words? Uh, Jamar, have you got anybody to pray us out today? Would you like for Brother Joshua? Yes, yeah, Brother. If, if Brother Joshua would, dear Brother, could you bless us with um, a closing out of prayer. Yes, sir. Absolutely. It would be my honor, sir. All right. And thank you all again. It was an extreme honor. May Allah continue to bless us all. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful, master of the day of judgment, which we now live, thee alone do we serve and thee alone do we receive for thine aid. O oh, Allah, please guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom thou be so favors, not the path of those upon whom thou's wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray. Uh, Allah, continue to bless us who are fighting in your cause. We ask you this in the name of Master Muhammad, the most humble like Muhammad, and the most humble like Muhammad, who is far I mean, may Allah continue to bless us all to win. So just keep fighting. That's before the signing. Please don't break under pressure. Yes, sir. Allah Love you, Dow. Bye. I love you too.